Over the course of the last year, I've done multiple speed level designs which I have uploaded on the channel but I've never said what I thought of the used assets. That being said, in today's video we are going to take a look over an asset pack that really caught my attention. And besides me discussing it and giving my opinion, in the background you can see a speed level design using the asset pack. And if you want to check more speed level designs out, you can click on the card in the top right corner to watch those as well. And before starting, I want to say that this video wasn't sponsored by the author of the pack, it's just me giving honest feedback in case any Everybody wants to buy this pack. And the asset pack that I'm going to review in this video is called Procedural Landscape Ecosystem. And if you don't know what that is, let me give you a brief introduction and description of it. PLE, the short form, is an exclusively Unreal Engine for asset pack that you can buy over on the marketplace for around 155 euros or 177 dollars. The pack contains photorealistic landscapes and vegetation that has 9 pine trees, 7 birch trees, 29 types of grasses, 6 flowers, 10 firms, 14 ground covers, 8 bushes, a total of 39 rock. These are only some of the assets found in this pack. For the full list, I'll leave down in the description of this video a link to the marketplace page to check them out yourself. The description also states that this pack is used in some popular projects such as World War 3 and Island of 9 BR. Hopefully that's how you pronounce that. Anyway, to be honest, I'm not surprised at all that such project decided to use this asset pack. Now that you know a little bit about this pack, let's start with the pros and cons of it. I'll first start with the cons, so we get this out of the way. So the first and the biggest con is that this pack uses an experimental feature, that being procedural foliage. Although it's not really a deal breaking, if you're aiming for big projects this might not be a good thing to use for now. And even though, as mentioned, popular projects such as World War 3 use it, that doesn't mean that there are no chances of you finding a possible bug. Or something that can literally break and corrupt your project files. So if you consider buying this pack, I recommend waiting until this feature comes out of experimental and it's fully stable. The second con is the price tag. Although the pack is worth all the money, this pack might not be suited for indie studios and developers. Something that kind of cancels this out is that if you aim to be a good level designer aiming high in the industry, this pack can boost your portfolio by a ton. And the third and last downside I was able to find is the complexity of this pack. At first chance, there is a big chance of this being a tad overwhelming. This is self-explanatory, it's like playing a game without checking out the tutorial. Let's be honest here, what real gamer plays the tutorial anyway? Fortunately enough, the developer of this pack added a list that contains tutorials, showcases and a playable demo. Now that we got the cons out of the way, let's get straight into the pros. First and foremost, the big amount of assets that you get in this pack. As I said before, the list of assets goes on and on. But not only that, the quality is insane. Very good meshes with perfect textures, making the asset look photorealistic. But out of all of these, my most favorite feature is the possibility to have procedural foliage and a really great landscape material that will auto-paint itself based on the height of the vertices. Second upside which is a must for all of these kind of assets is optimization. There are about 3 LODs for each mesh plus the billboard. And I was surprised when I saw the billboards from a far distance there is barely any way to tell that they are just billboards and not 3D meshes. And if you don't know what billboards are, they are basically two perpendicular planes with only textures placed on them to simulate objects that are far away. And that's pretty much everything for the pros and cons. And even though I mentioned more cons than pros, that doesn't mean that the pack is bad in any way. Now that you saw the speed level design as well, let's take a look into the actual pack and see how to set it up. So now, here in a new world, I'm going to show you how to set everything properly. So the first thing that we'll have to do is to go into edit, editor preferences, then go to experimental, and right to the top, tick procedural foliage. And now we should be able to use foliage spawners. The second thing that we have to do is to create a landscape. Here I'm going to have mine one by one, nothing too complex. And then we'll have to choose a material. So we'll go to materials, landscape, and here we are going to choose one. So I'm going to choose a spring one, landscape material, and just drag and drop it in here. And then you're going to see that the entire landscape is going to get populated with foliage, that being grass and ferns, but you can see that the material is going to be black. So in order to solve that, we need to go to landscape, then go to paint and in here we'll need to create new layers info or we can use the ones that we already have in the pack so landscape layers and just plug whichever are going to work in here okay and the last one now the shaders are going to compile we should wait just a little bit okay 26 to go and then everything should not be black anymore as you can see and there's actually a specific type of material and then we can uh, we are going to be able to paint with a grass plane 
Okay, so I'm going to paint with grass plane everywhere right now. So everything is going to be the same. Okay, so this is how you have to do the material part. And now let's go and see how we can spawn the actual trees and the rocks and whatever. So we'll go to meshes, ecosystem, and here we are going to drag all of this tree. I'm going to scale all of them. So make sure that they are going to go in your landscape. So the bottom part is going to be uh, down here. Okay. I'm going to make this, make sure that this is the entire landscape. And now in order to make sure that these are going to work, we will need to paint the landscape. If you're not going to do that, once you're going to press re-simulate, this is going to give you errors. So, it seems that actually one of those worked and that's probably the meadow rock spawner that works on the grass layer that we painted. So the grass plane. Let's paint some pine forest as well here. Okay, and then we're going to get birch forest. And then we are also going to get global ground aid just to see how that looks and what it does. So basically this one is going to get rid of all the grass and I believe that that is what the wet puddle does as well. As you can see, so this is basically mud. And now once we are going to go back to our spawners, so we are going to select all the three of them and then we are going to click simulate. You can see that here we are going to have we are going to have the burst trees and then here we are going to have the pine trees. So let me see if I can make this a little bit brighter so we can see better. Okay. So now you can see this pretty well. These are the pine trees and then these are the burst trees. Exactly in the spot that we wanted them to be placed. And also we have these rocks as I said. And then one, as I, uh, one really nice feature that I talked about was the auto painting material. So if I'm going to sculpt this, you can see that there's going to be rock which is going to be automatically placed on the landscape, which I, th I think is really nice, a really good feature to have in every, every material which is going to help you a lot. So yeah, this is pretty much everything you have to set up before being able to use the pack. And that's pretty much everything for this video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and hit the subscribe button to stay up to tune for new videos. I'm going to start producing more asset reviews in the future because I feel like UE4 community lags this really badly and I think people could find this useful if they are planning to buy assets from the marketplace. So if you want to see more asset reviews in the future, make sure to subscribe. That being said, thanks for watching and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Goodbye.